Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to talk a little bit about problem diagnosis and a, a process to follow that uh, will help you to locate the essential issue with your reel prior to just diving in. I can't tell you how many times I get reels in a bag project because folks didn't know exactly what the cause was and they decided to disassemble the entire reel, uh, many of which uh, parts did not have issues. And then when they went to put it back together, then something uh, was awry or they never fixed the initial problem to begin with. So the best thing to do in terms of diagnosing the problem is, is go with your instincts first. So if you feel a vibration, if you hear a clicking noise, if there's something that just isn't working, if you notice that the spool is not going up and down, if your bail is not tripping, those are the obvious things and do a little bit of work in preparation for trying to take the reel apart and understand what the issue is. And the first, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to go out and, and kind of see what you're up against. Go get a schematic of a reel. Now this isn't for those reels, but this is for a live liner that came in as a reel in a bag project that I'm going to be working on shortly. And take a look and understand the mechanics behind the reel so that you can see for example, does the reel have an instant anti-reverse, like this one does, or does it have the old-style uh, spring-loaded dog, or does it have a click uh, anti-reverse that happens to be below in the body of the reel as opposed to being under the rotor? That way you can start uh, to localize what your issue is and minimize uh, taking off stuff that may not need to be taken off. So get the schematic. If you have an understanding of the mechanics of the reel, big gear drives little gear to make the rotor run. Back of the main gear drives the crosswind gear for the most part to make the spool go up and down. Well, then at least you, you start to understand where you're going to look for the cause of the issue. So we're going to look at three pen reels that I just got in. They, they kind of came from what I call a clunker box. There's a fellow looking to just get rid of some reels that had accumulated over time. His friend had given him some reels that uh, that weren't working, these three. And uh, he decided just to sell out rather than just keeping them on his bench trying to work, uh, work through what the issues are. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of a problem diagnosis about this stuff. But start with the schematic. Have a game plan before you take any pieces and parts off understand how the reel operates and then go with your instincts in terms of what you think the issues are. And by all means, if you don't think that there's going to be a problem in a particular area, leave that area alone until you do a general rebuild. For example, here's a reel that's just very sluggish. Okay. Now, if I test the bale, the bale is a little sluggish, but it's working. This is one of those hammer bales where it comes over and it hits the post and comes back. You do not need to remove the bale to deal with sluggishness. Sluggishness is generally dried grease. Here's a reel that's skipping. And we'll go through this in more detail in the diagnosis. Well, that skipping has nothing to do with a bale, so leave the bale alone. Probably has nothing to do with the drags inside the spool, so you don't have to attack that at the moment. That sounds like it's a, a lower case issue. So deal with the lower case, leave the rest of the reel intact until you identify what the issue is. And then you have two options. You can either go rebuild the entire reel or you can simply fix the particular issue that you're trying to address. I mentioned before, for example, a uh, anti-reverse that's not holding. You don't have to do the service if you've just serviced the reel. You don't have to pull the whole reel apart. Just localize it to that anti-reverse dog or the anti-reverse clutch spurring and just work on that for the uh, the time being. I happen to make practice of rebuilding the entire reel, but you don't have to, particularly if you're in the middle of a fishing season and you've got a trip coming up and you don't want to uh, have that reel just sitting around on a bench for a while. You'd rather have it working. Well, then just do the quick repair and then come back later in the season and rebuild the reel. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take a look at these three reels. I'm going to look at three reels that I recently acquired as uh, part of a... Um, uh, an estate sale where the fellow was just getting rid of some of his older pieces. And these are clunkers. These are reels that I think uh, the fellow received along the way. 
weren't working for various reasons and just put them in the lot with the others. So I have three spin fishers. They're early spin fishers. And um, two of them are the larger reel. One of them is the 550. I think the others are 650s or 750s, 650s, I think. Yeah, 650 SSs. So they're all the same era and they all have problems. So let's just uh, sit back and do a diagnostic on these. Rather than working on these one by one, I'm going to take the three of these apart. I'm going to find out why they're failing and see if I can find replacement parts so that I can give all of these reels a second chance. These two don't have line on it. It's apparent that they haven't been fished in a while. This one's got some braid on it, so we'll see. All right, let's start with a 650. This one seems to be working fine other than it's tight and it's noisy. So we'll see what we can do there. This one is hardly turning at all. So we'll open that one up and take a look. And this one, it's got all kinds of skips and noise making in there. So I wanna, I'd like to restore all of these. They still have a value. And uh, we're gonna take these apart, see what I need to order in terms of replacement pieces and parts to uh, make this thing work. So let's get started. And uh, I'm going to start by trying to take the handle off of this one. There you go. And as I take the exterior parts off, I'd like to, to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. Uh, your efforts truly are appreciated. Thank you for everything it is that you do. Well, as we open this up, the first thing we notice is we've got so much salt and crust and, and junk in here. I mean, that should be a washer that's holding oil, but instead it's just frozen and coagulated with the um, salt and dirt and debris. So we're going to think that a large portion of this reel is going to be just that, a lot of dirt. And hopefully, this is the one that's just bogged down, and hopefully it's just that. We just need to, to clean some things up and there's no broken pieces inside. And this is a problem with the older reels. When you get uh, get them salt and crusted in that, sometimes the screws are a little difficult to turn, and just you have to be careful. I just sprayed these with some penetrating oil to see if I can't uh, dissolve some of the initial greases in here. And these reels are pretty easy to to take a, a visual on once you do get the uh, first part uh, opened up. You can pretty much see what's failing by feel and sense right there. So we know we'll have to replace that little uh, oil ring. And the, uh, it seems like the penetrating oil has helped this screw a little bit. And after you break it, maybe a turn or two, just reapply. That way it will seep into the... There you go. Makes it a lot easier coming out. So penetrating oil is always on my bench. I use it as a degreaser. I use it for something like this where I have to uh, take the time to try and loosen some uh, salt buildup or the like and uh, I, it's one of your best friends as a real repair person all right we have three of these they're really salt encrusted i am going to just again just kind of dose them and i'm going to put them into my parts tray for a moment that should enable me to remove this however i know this reel is so stuck that uh, it's going to be difficult getting out just based on the the, uh, the feel of this reel so I'm using a razor knife and I'm trying to get between the cavity here. <clears throat> that way I don't scar anything up on the way in and out. Okay, this one looks like what I thought I was going to see in here. It appears that all the pieces and parts are there. It's just totally dried and greased up. And it doesn't look like other than this, um, this little ring here for the oil that I'm going to need to order replacement parts. So that's reel number one. And we're not going to spend a lot of time servicing this at the moment, but I am going to come back and do all of these reels uh, once the appropriate parts come in. So the second one is stuck. That's a little bit different. So let's find out the diagnosis on these. So sticking or, or just a, a, a poor performing reel in grease, that's pretty easy to tell because everything will move the way it should move. Your spool will be going up and down. Your handle will be turning. It's just that it's not uh, not as designed, if you will. It's not a smooth action, and it's just uh, just hard to reel. So that's this one. 
let's go ahead and take a look at the other 650 while we have it here. I'm just putting the parts on. I'm not making any attempt to to button this reel back up firmly. I just want to get these so that I don't lose the pieces and parts uh, of that reel. Alright, here's reel number two. This is the one every now and then it turns in a spurt and uh, then it sticks. So that usually says something's broke. The question is where is it broke? Is it broken below here or is it broken up top under the rotor? Again, we have that same felt uh, washer that's just totally uh, saturated with salt, as you can kind of see here. And that's kind of dangerous. The, this is the washer I was referring to. Looks like we'll have to get two of those. I'm not sure how that bearing is performing because of this, but let's go ahead and do the same thing on this reel. Let's see why, why we're getting hung up in here if we can. Again, a little bit of penetrating oil onto these screws. Kind of give them a help to get out of there. And we'll do the same thing. So on diagnosing problems in a reel, you have to have a fundamental understanding of how a reel works in order to understand what part of a reel is not working. And most of the time, uh, it's big gear drives little gear and uh, makes, the, makes the reel spin. In this case, we have a spinning reel, so it would be making the rotor spin in a circle. And then there's a secondary gear on spinning reels that move the spool up and down for lining purposes. So one of the things you want to look at right away is are all of those functionings work, that piece is functioning properly. So if your rotor's not turning, well then it's probably big gear, little gear issue. If the spool's not going up and down, it's that back end side with the crosswind gears. And you just need to, to be cognizant of that so that you can eliminate certain causes so that it'll help you move along. This one is really stuck hard, which I guess is no surprise. I don't need to take this side thing. It's just a trim ring at this point. But I'm thinking that this bearing may be uh, stuck there as a part of it. Again, I'm going to try and use the utility knife as a wedge just to kind of move this side plate out. But I'm feeling stuck bearings right now is what I'm feeling in the... If you can't get a side plate off, got a stuck bearing issue there. You can't get at it from this side. You can't get at it from this side. What you want to do in this case is just spray this down and come back to it because right now that bearing is kind of welded into the case. Let that go do its work. All right, so let's come over to this one. This one's fairly obvious. We got a major skip in this one. So we're going to uh, do the same thing with this. We'll remove the handle. And this is the 550 SS. It's smaller and uh, it's probably a little bit older based on the handle. Ben upgraded the handles uh, along the way. These are nice reels. If I can get this one going again, it's going to be a pleasure to fish with. But something, it feels like it's missing a tooth. Now, how do you tell that? Well, it's not an even reel. What we were saying before, you want to take a look at all the features and functions going on here. So this one is spinning, and it is moving up and down, but it's erratic. It's noisy, and something isn't lining up in there. So this may be a case where something got hung up in a snag, and somebody tried to power through it and broke some teeth. Now one of the problems that we have with these reels is that the parts are becoming harder and harder to find. And... Uh, you may or may not be able to get the replacements that you need. All right, let's spin this down. So this is spinning by its own accord, and it's doing what it should be doing without the case being on. That's kind of interesting. But there seems, I'm, well, here, we, this is probably it right here. We have a lot of movement in and out here. And so let's go find out what's going on. Let's take this other side off. And we have the burring in there, so it won't be that. You never know when you're buying a, uh, a set of project reels or clunkers. Somebody may have taken a piece or a part out of the reel just to use as a, on a different reel and then sold the reel and you're sitting there out of luck because you don't know what's going on. All right, so this is the third of them. So we know one is okay, just dry grease. The second one here is being very noise, noisy. And the third one right now, we're having an issue getting the, uh, the side plate off. 
thing. I'm putting these here because my parts tray is filled with the pieces from the other one. It's kind of uh, resting there at the moment. So if I can remove, remove the axle shaft, we'll take a look. And that gear doesn't look terrible. Hmm. Lots of dry grease. I'm checking now all of the teeth on the gear. And they're symmetrical. They don't seem to be broken. But they are terribly clogged with grease. And then the same thing here on the back. I want to make sure all the teeth that drive the crosswind gear are in place. So that seems to be okay. The top end seems to be working fine. So I think what we're going to wind up doing on this one, we're just going to check one more piece here, which is this crosswind gear. The crosswind gear drives the spool up and down. Now on the preliminary look, Okay, but I just want to check the teeth right now. Checking all the teeth. So this one's very dirty. We may be missing a shim washer. I don't know, but I don't think that parts are the issue on this one. So we're, uh, we're going to have to do some further work on that, but I'm not seeing anything that's obvious in here in terms of a broken piece or a part. So we're going to just pry, I'm going to take those three pieces out of there that belong to the other reel. I'm going to put this whole reel in here. I'm going to have my own reel in a bag project that uh, I'll get to a little bit later. But again, the purpose of this one is more to look towards why is a, are these three reels failing and do we need to order any parts. I hate to, to do these things serially where you, where you order, you open up a reel, you order a bunch of parts for that reel and then you go on to the next one. The problem with that is you're paying an awful lot in terms of the parts um, shipping. So if you can avoid a couple of pieces with that then uh, you're better off for it. Alright, I'm going to pull this off. There's a screw that holds the main gear into the bearing from the other side. Boy, I just released something there. I'm just going to remove that because if the bearing is frozen onto the gear, maybe we can get it out that way. But something just jumped right up on this one, so we'll see what's going on there. And I okay, we're up on this one. So the main gear looks fine, but the main gear is st stuck in that bearing there. We're going to have to just continue to work this with uh, penetrating oil, and, and uh, eventually we will get this free, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take a lot more time than I have on camera at the moment. So without that main gear then, let's go ahead and spin. The upper end seems to be doing okay. Remember, this wasn't moving much, and of course the spool's not going up and down because of the, the crosswind block. And we'll just do one more piece here. So I think I got clunkers here that for the most part do not need parts. But there is some issues here in terms of the dried grease and the like. And in this case a frozen bearing where the, the uh, main gear is kind of frozen into that bearing there. So we'll have to see. So what did we do and what did we learn from this? We learned that you have to do a diagnostic, diagnostic approach to this. You have to understand what's moving what pieces along the way and where the, uh, the problems may reside. So some of that is by noise, some of that is by feel, like vibration, and some of that is just by intuition in terms of understanding that uh, a particular part should be in one place or another. And uh, if it's not uh, working properly, uh, it may just be a matter of dirt, grease, and grime, or it may be a matter of a broken piece or part. So, we're going to uh, put these aside for a moment, but I did want to introduce you to how to diagnose these problems. And it looks like for the most part that uh, these can be remedied. And I'll report back in terms of what the issues were once I get a little bit deeper into these. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something from it. If you did and you like this, please uh, subscribe. And if you want to see more, please hit the notification button. That way you'll know when I post my videos. And uh, if that video that I'm posting is one that you think you will enjoy, you'll be tipped off as to uh, uh, what's being published when and uh, how to watch it. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.